700,000 of you voted on who the most fun killer to play against is. And after a ton of math, I finally have the results for you guys. This list is how fun it is to play against the killer from a survivor's perspective. So in today's video, we're going to be ranking every single killer from least fun to play against to most fun to play against. Some of the placements on this list make me really sad. Since there's 28 total killers on this list, I split them into four different categories of seven. So we have the extremely boring tier, then the kind of boring tier, then the fun tier, then the really fun tier. If you enjoy this video format and want to see more videos with my face in it like this, go drop a like and then leave a pineapple emoji down in the comment section below. Also come join my discord server. Anyway guys, let's get right into the list. The worst spot is not surprising at all to anybody and it's the twins. Yes. The twins were the worst voted in this video, and now they're the worst voted in this video, and I love it. So basically what we can conclude is nobody likes the twins. Twins have a terrible design philosophy. They promote tunneling, hardcore slugging, and camping, which are the three things that survivors complain about all the time. So no wonder she's low on this list. The only fun aspect of playing the twins is being able to kick the baby, but when is that ever going to happen? Because you can barely kick the baby because of the huge giant hitboxes with the bad ping in this game. You can also take Victor for a piggyback ride, which, uh, you know, can be fun, I guess. But if Charlotte isn't chasing you, then you're basically doing nothing until she recalls him. The next spot is going to Hag. I cannot believe you guys put Hag this low. What are you thinking? Hag should not be this low. I'm just putting that out there. Everybody says that Hag promotes camping. I don't know where you're getting that. The only way her power promotes camping is because she can put a trap near the hooked survivor, but just crouch over the trap. It takes like three seconds. It's not that big of a deal. I don't, I don't understand. And if you have a flashlight, you can just burn the trap and then she, she doesn't promote camping. I don't get where that's coming from. I just realized I spilled water on my shirt. That's, that's really cute. I know that most people hate playing against the Hag, but the reason I'm so surprised that she's this low on the list is because she has counterplay. Some of the other killers on this list don't even have counterplay and chase. I don't get how that's fun at all, but you know. I also just may enjoy playing against the Hag more than most people because Hag is one of my killer mains, so I know how to play against her most effectively, and not a lot of killers actually use Hag, so people probably just don't know her counterplay at all. But if you know how to counter her, she's so easy to counter. The 26th spot is going to, justifiably, the Trickster. If I were to remove one killer from this game, it would be the Trickster. I cannot tell you how boring this killer is. Like, I would rather play against the Twins than play against the Trickster. And I'm very surprised that Hag is not above Trickster. Trickster does not have counterplay and chase in most situations. His only quote unquote counterplay is in tall loops and then, you know, indoor maps and stuff. But getting a tall loop or an indoor map is pretty rare. Like, think of any of the Cold Wind, the Auto Haven, or the Macmillan maps, for example. The entire center of all of those maps generally have those low loops with either cars or like fences or debris. All of those are completely irrelevant for Trickster because he can just hit you right over those loops. And there's not a single thing you can do about it. One of my pet peeves in gaming is when they design something in a way where you can do nothing about it and there's no skill involved at all. And Trickster is exactly that. Luckily though, he's really bad outside of Chase, so he's not like this extremely oppressive killer. All right, next up we have Freddy Krueger, aka the Nightmare. This makes a lot of sense. Like nobody enjoys playing against Freddy, especially if he's using snares. If he's using pallets, I'm sure people enjoy playing against him more, but the snares are just so boring. It's basically worse anti-loop than Clown, but he can teleport. Like it's very dumb. He used to be a much more interesting character, but he slowly got nerfed and nerfed and nerfed to the ground to the point where he's just kind of like there. Like he doesn't really have anything special. <laughs> I think maybe they should try to bring back his old power where, you know, he pulls the survivors into the dream world and work something out with that. That's a little more interesting. Next up. Next up, we have the clown. I completely agree with this. The clown is very, very boring to play against. He just throws his bottle and then you can't see anything and you're dizzy and you're just like, ah, uh, uh, and he's just not a fun killer to loop. His mechanics aren't that interesting. He just throws a bottle and if you step in it, you get slowed down. Like, wow, very cool. However, this killer was made when survivors were figuring out that looping is the most effective strategy against a killer. So behavior being behavior decided to do a band-aid fix by making a killer that eliminates looping. Moving on to the next but we have the spirit. Spirit would have been way lower on this list if it weren't for her drastic nerf, which literally no one uses spirit anymore. Pre-patch spirit was extremely annoying, but now she's in a pretty good place where survivors can hear where she's teleporting to, so they at least have some counterplay. I still think she's a pretty strong killer, but she's not exactly that interesting anymore to play against. Like, although pre-patch spirit was definitely more annoying, you at least did some really interesting mind games because you never knew where she was going to appear. Now, you know exactly where she's going to appear, so there's not really any mind game 
potential, you know? Hopefully they look into her kit and just make her much more interesting overall because I've played against maybe one or two spirit players since this nerf. The last killer on our extremely boring tier is going to the doctor. I would heavily disagree with this. Like, I don't think he should be this low on the list. Yes, I understand it's annoying to just be holding M1 all the time because you keep getting shocked. Actually, now that I think about it, he is pretty boring. <laughs> yeah, I guess in loops, like he, all he does is just shock and then shock and then shock, right? So I guess you just continue running around and there's no like mind gaming because he just shocks until he can catch up to you. So yeah, I guess it's, he, he's pretty boring. But I think he's actually kind of higher on this list because he does have some things going for him. I think these survivors kind of enjoy the idea of like outplaying his timing and stuff. But in most loops that are like regular loops, like pallet loops or something, all you do is run around it until he shocks you and catches up to you. So there's not really any interesting gameplay mechanics. All right, moving on to the next tier of killers, we have the plague. Honestly, I don't really know why the plague is this low on this list. I think most survivors just don't really like being injured the entire game. And maybe she's just boring because she doesn't have any power in chase whatsoever if you don't cleanse. So she's just like a basic M1 killer. But I feel like it's fun to go against a basic M1 killer because you have to do regular looping. And in my opinion, regular looping is one of the most fun aspects of this game. So I'm a little disappointed that she's this low on this list, but I can understand it from like a casual perspective of people who don't really know how to loop. So I can kind of understand it, but I don't think she should be this low on this list, especially compared to some of the other killers. Like the number 20 spot, which is going to Artist. How is the Artist above the Plague? The only counterplay to Artist in Chase is to hold W. How is that fun? I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Any killer where the counterplay is to hold W just to leave the loop are terrible designs. It's so boring. There's no, there's no looping. You're just holding one button and then the killer has to do the same thing and hold one button. It's like, it's, I don't, I don't understand how that's fun at all. I think outside of Chase, she's kind of cool, but in Chase, you literally have zero counterplay if the killer knows what they're doing. I think maybe people just haven't played against enough good artists to basically understand how powerful she is in Chase. It's like 108 degrees here, so I am terribly hot. I'm gonna have to keep switching hands because my hands are getting sweaty. The next spot is going to Nurse. I can understand this in some situations. I think Nurse is kind of in the middle of the list because if you get a bad Nurse, she's one of the most fun killers to verse in the entire game by far. But if you get a good Nurse who knows what they're doing, it feels like you can do absolutely nothing. And you tend to get good nurses better than bad nurses because nurse is a hard killer to play. So the first time somebody plays nurse, they're never going to play her again. So the people who are actually playing nurse tend to be the ones who have practiced her a lot. But I can totally understand it, especially good nurses that use the most meta perks like pain res, dead man switch, ruin, and corrupt intervention. If you're good at nurse and you're using those perks, you're going way overkill. One time I had one of the sweaty nurses on shelter woods and that was awful. They downed all four of us in approximately 45 seconds. That was a fun time. Very fun, good fun. The next spot on our list is going to the Cenobite. I actually really enjoy playing the Cenobite personally. I think it's actually pretty fun to dodge his chain and chase because you can do a lot of different mind games and movement techniques with it. But I can understand why he's kind of lower on this list because solo queue against a pinhead is atrocious. Since he has his chain hunt ability where a survivor has to go get the box to, you know, stop the chain hunt ability, it's really hard for solo queue survivors that don't have any communication whatsoever because sometimes nobody will go get the box even if they're really close to it. Or everybody will go get the box and then you're just wasting everybody's time. So I think the reason he's higher on this list is because in chase, he's pretty fun, but outside of chase, he's not very fun with the whole chain hunt thing and, you know, not having any communication. Also behavior, if you have the box, please make me immune to all chains when I'm solving the box, because sometimes I will start solving it and then halfway through, I'll get hit by another chain. So I'll have to resolve it and then halfway through, I'll get hit by another chain and I just have to, it, it's so annoying. Like it's so annoying. Please change that. It's, it's terrible. Okay. The next spot is going to the cannibal. I'm actually very surprised that he's this high on this list. I thought everyone was going to hate on the cannibal because of his stigma with, you know, Franklin's demise and face camping and just being toxic in general. But he is pretty high on this list. Like it's almost directly in the middle of the list, which I can totally understand because he's actually pretty fun in chase. He's extremely fun if the cannibal has no idea what they're doing and they only use one token because then the chainsaws are really short. So you just feel like the most overpowered survivor. And he has counterplay with like risk reward scenarios. For example, if you're at a pallet loop, you can greed the pallet and not throw it while he's chainsawing, which is of course really risky. But then if the cannibal mistimes their token usage, then their chainsaw will stop and you get either distance or more time in that loop. So there is kind of a risk reward situation going on with the survivors. And he has a lot of counterplay with windows. Like a lot of the times, since his chainsaw doesn't really have mobility, you can force him to M1 you at a window. So overall, I think he's a pretty balanced killer right now that has a lot of counterplay on both sides. Besides, of course, the whole face camping thing, which is obviously really annoying. Next up is going to the Legion. I'm actually surprised they're this high on this list. So many people complain about Legion being a mending simulator, which, you know, understandably so. But since a Legion is such a bad killer and they don't have any looping ability, 
abilities. They're just a regular M1 killer in chase, which a lot of people find fun. The only reason they're this low on this list is probably because of the mending simulator situation. And especially, which I don't think a lot of people realize is really annoying, but when you're on solo queue and everybody else gets hit except for you, and then the Legion comes to you, they can hit you and then down you instantly with basically no counterplay. It's kind of like your teammates giving Myers a bunch of stock and then he 99s it. And then the first time he sees you, he pops it on you and kills you instantly. It's kind of that situation, but I'm glad people actually enjoy playing against the Legion because I thought they were going to be way lower on this list. The last killer in this tier is going to the Trapper. Not a lot of people play Trapper, but I think the reason he's kind of middle of the road is because for one, he's a really underpowered killer. It's very fun to loop a killer with essentially no abilities and you know, survivors like to win and it's really easy to win against a Trapper. But the reason he's not higher on the list for that exact reason is because of two things. For one, survivors are going to be paranoid the entire game. Like you never know where a trap is and it's terrifying. So they'll likely not want to loop and they'll not go in any tall grass. So you're just paranoid the entire time, which can't be fun for some people. And two, basement trappers are the most annoying, atrocious thing ever. These are the trappers who will bring iron grasp and agitation and bring the basement to shack and just put traps in every single entrance of shack and just camp the basement. It's the most boring thing ever. And with the trapper buff a few months ago, it just got exponentially worse. But I'm just glad you don't run into this very often. All right, moving on to the fun tier of killers. These are killers who are usually fun, but can sometimes have something that makes them very annoying. The first one is going to Wraith. I'm really, really surprised that Wraith is this low on this list. I think Wraith is one of the most balanced killers in the game. I understand that a lot of people didn't like Wraith originally because he had this hit and run play style where he would just hit you and then you just be injured a lot, kind of like Legion. But with the circle of healing meta, these Wraiths kind of disappeared because that's a really ineffective strategy now. So I'm surprised he's still pretty low on this list. Like I can't even think of a reason why people wouldn't like him. He has plenty of counterplay and chase. He has plenty of looping potential against him. It's really fun to have a flashlight and burn him constantly. What is there not to like about the Wraith? I genuinely cannot think of a reason. So if you have a reason you don't like the Wraith, please comment it down below because I'm really interested to hear why he's this low on this list. The next spot is going to Pig. I would fully agree with this placement. Pig is really, really fun in chase. Like she has her ambush ability, which has a lot of mind gaming on both sides, which is extremely fun. She's a regular M1 killer in chase. Like she's really fun to be in chase with, but she's kind of in the middle of this list because of her head traps. And it's really boring going around the entire map sometimes just trying to get your head trap off. And there are some pigs out there who will camp and tunnel these survivors with an active head trap on just to make sure their head pops. And it's really, really annoying. The 12th spot is going to the Death Slinger. He's actually really high on this list. He would have been probably towards the bottom of this list pre-patch, but now with the aim down sight nerf and his terror radius nerf, he's actually a pretty balanced killer in my opinion. It's much easier to dodge the shots and to predict where they're gonna shoot. And the slower aim down sight speed gives you enough time to move your character out of the hitbox range. So I actually think he's a really balanced killer right now and has a lot of counterplay and mind gaming on both sides. And people seem to enjoy playing against him and dodging his shots, which is really, really cool. I'm actually very glad that he's in a really good spot right now because God, he was annoying to play when he could just insta quick scope. All right, the next spot is going to the Onryo. I think people enjoy the Onryo for a lot of different reasons. For one, she's a relatively weak killer. So it's actually pretty easy to win against her and people like winning, of course. And two, she's kind of designed to be like a jump scare stealth killer. And I think a lot of people actually really enjoy the stealth aspect of this game. I just think survivors enjoy her design because there's nothing an Onryo can use to make their kit oppressive. Like for example, Bubba can make face camping miserable and pigs can do that thing where they just tunnel the people trying to get their head traps off. Whereas Onryo has nothing that she can use to do something like that. Like she's just a killer. You have to play her normally. So I think a lot of survivors actually really appreciate that. The next spot on this list, which I'm actually really surprised about is going to Nemesis. I wonder what the fun aspects of Nemesis are because in my opinion, he's not that counterable in chase if the Nemesis is good and knows how to use their tentacle properly. However, the random aspects of the zombies are kind of fun and they're just so derpy a lot of the times that it's, it just makes for some really funny moments. Just the fact that you can, you know, stun the zombies to kill them, head on the zombies, blind them, and then smack their butt. Like you could just do so much funny stuff with them that it makes them kind of entertaining. So I think the zombies are the reason he's this high on this list because like in chase, if you take a window, you get hit. If you don't take a window, you get hit unless the killer has bad aim. So I doubt most survivors are talking about his actual chase. However, because it is actually kind of hard to be able to hit your tentacle when you're playing the nemesis, it makes it easier for the survivors to dodge it. So he is a bit more counterable on that front if you're really unpredictable with your movements. The next spot is going to the dredge. And this makes me so happy. The fact that behavior has designed now two killers in a row that are fun to play against is amazing. I would fully agree that the dredge is really fun. He has three abilities, right? The smallest one being that in chase, he can put down a little thing that he can teleport back to or cancel. So as the survivor, it's kind of a 50 50 mind game on whether or not he'll teleport back to it or cancel it. And I'm just putting this out there. If this is one of the reasons you enjoy playing against the dredge, 
ledge. It's the same exact gameplay loop as a hag that puts a trap in a loop. It's the same exact thing. You trigger the trap and it's a 50-50 mind game on whether or not she'll teleport back or just continue to hit you. I'm just saying. You're kind of short. Okay, and the last killer on this fun tier is going to the Executioner, and I completely agree with this placement. I think he's in a really good spot right now where the survivor has a lot of counterplay to him. A lot of counterplay to his, you know, thing. I should be the sound designer for DVD. <laughs> but he's just mechanically pretty fun because there's really easy ways to dodge his hits, and you kind of have to think two steps ahead at all times because you have to think about where the Executioner thinks you are going to be and not be there. Does that make sense? So I think people just really enjoy that, and he just has a simple power and I think people like simplicity. And you're going to see that a lot. With the last seven killers on this list, the extremely fun killers to play against all have very, very basic and straightforward abilities. So clearly, survivors just enjoy the basic, straightforward killers. What do you guys have? Small brains? The seventh spot is going to the Blight. And I'm so happy that the Blight is in the extremely fun tier because I personally think, even though he's the second strongest killer in the game, he's one of the most balanced killers in the game because he has plenty of counterplay from the survivor's perspective. Of course, assuming the killer is not using, you know, a J flick or a lag flick or a McDonald's flick or a why have you not liked the video flick? I'm so happy with this. Like, this makes me so happy because Blight is such an incredibly balanced killer and there's so much that you can do to dodge his ability. So that's just really awesome. The next spot is going to the Huntress. And I've heard of so many people complaining about the Huntress. I don't know why. I literally don't know why. She's one of the most balanced killers in the game. She has plenty of counterplay because there's a lot of time for her to wind up her hatchet so you know exactly when she's using her power and exactly what you should try to do in any given situation. So there's a lot of different ways you can approach a loop. Like, for example, at a pallet loop, you can just continue being greedy with the pallet and never throw it and then hope that the Huntress keeps pulling up their hatchets, which will give you even more loops. And eventually you can stun them when you think they're going to walk straight through the pallet. Just little things like that make her a really, really fun killer to play against. And I completely agree with this placement. The fifth spot on this list is going to Michael Myers. And I know I can see right through you guys. You just like Michael Myers because for one, he's just a basic M1 killer and you get to loop him. And secondly, he's the second worst killer in the entire game. And I know you guys just enjoy that. But I have to say, I fully agree with you. I think the shape is actually really fun to play against unless you're that solo queue survivor who ends up getting instantly downed because your survivors fed him stock. But besides that, yeah, he's pretty fun, I must say. He's just super simple and I love that about him. The fourth spot is going to Ghostface. And this is the same exact thing as the shape. But I think people like Ghostface more because he actually has stealth. And stealth makes for some really fun moments. If you're on an indoor map, it's extremely scary going against a Ghostface. And since he's a basic M1 killer, you're actually doing regular looping with him. And sometimes the looping will get a little more intense if the ghost face decides to hide his red stain with his power. So overall, he's just, again, another simple killer who's fun to play against, fun to play as, very well designed killer. All right, we're finally on to the last three spots on this list. The third spot is going to Oni. I'm so surprised that you guys put Oni in the third place spot. Like that is incredible to me because a lot of people complain about how his power promotes slugging, but I would agree. Like I personally really enjoy playing against Onis too because first of all, his sound design is phenomenal and just hearing his roar from across the map still gives me the chills. It's so awesome. And playing against him normally, he's just a basic M1 killer, so you're looping him and looping is fun. But even in his ability, you have so much counterplay that you can do. You can try to spin him. You can try to go around tight corners. You can try to bait pallets. You can try to do so many things. FOV tech. So many different things that you can do in chase while he's using his power that makes him really, really fun to verse. I absolutely love Oni, and I'm so glad that you guys love him too, because I think he's one of the most balanced and one of the most fun overall killers in the entire game. And the final two spots on this list, I completely agree with, but I'm actually kind of surprised with the placements. The second spot is going to Hillbilly. I absolutely love playing against hillbillies. Bad hillbillies are fun. Good hillbillies are even more fun. It's just so fun being in chase with a hillbilly because yeah, he can insta down you, which is a very, very scary ability, but it takes so much skill on the billy's end to actually be able to insta down you. So if the billy's using his chainsaw a lot, just like the Oni, you can do so much in chase with the billy's chainsaw and outplay him in just little minuscule ways, but you can do that even more because he has this chainsaw ability the entire game, unlike Oni who's only limited. There was no doubt in my mind that Hillbilly was going to be at least top three because every single survivor I've talked to loves playing against Hillbilly. Finally, that leaves us with the number one most fun killer to play against. And that is going to the one, the only Demogorgon. I completely agree. I think I would put Hillbilly above Demogorgon, but Demogorgon is also extremely fun to play against. His power is so simple. He just has a teleporting ability and a shred ability. Both of them are counterable if you're smart with what you're doing. The shred ability is kind 
kind of like facing a huntress where when you're coming up to a window or a pallet you have to decide whether or not you're gonna actually throw the pallet or take the window or dodge try to dodge a shred and on the killer side they're doing the same exact thing trying to figure out what you're gonna do while you're simultaneously trying to figure out what they're gonna do and that's single-handedly the best part about dead by daylight is trying to think of what the other party is gonna do mind games the act of mind gaming is the sole reason that dead by daylight is so successful and the demogorgon is just another killer that does it extremely well if you guys enjoyed this video go drop a like and subscribe if you're new and that's all i have for you today so i will see you all in the next one peace